The Poco yellow color looks stunning, especially with the black bezels. The yellow power standby button looks really cool. Feels so damn good in the hand. Hi there, here's the newly launched Poco X5 Pro 5G. Now, I've been using this for more than a week and I'm absolutely loving it. From the looks, to the performance, to the ergonomics, to the yellow accent power button. So cool. Now the price too is more than impressive starting at just 22,999 and considering the performance that's a really good deal. But it still does fall short of a few things which we shall talk about in this video. So make sure you watch this video till the end before you buy it. Without further ado, let's begin. Before we dive in, a quick unboxing. Here's the retail packaging, some key specs mentioned behind, a SIM ejector pin, some paperwork, a transparent TPU cover, USB-C cable and a 67 watt charging brick. Wow. Now, I have to say, the Poco yellow color looks stunning. And it's a little subtle yellow this time. Looks even more pleasing to the eyes. It's got a matte finish that doesn't attract any fingerprint or smudges. On the top are the triple camera setup, 108 megapixel primary camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide and the 2 megapixel macro. But what completely steals the show for me is the matte black frame and the yellow accent power button. I know it gives that pixel vibe, but I am not complaining. It also weighs just 180 grams with just 7.9 mm thickness. It's one of the lightest and most ergonomic phones I've held in a while. Boxy design, which I personally really like. The yellow power button also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. As usual, works really well, fast and responsive. Now, keep in mind, only the Poco yellow color has this yellow color power button, while the blue and the black variants of this phone come with the same respective colors. I think it should be fun if we saw Poco yellow on all their phones. Would have been great. Anyway, coming to my favorite part of the phone, the 6.67 inch AMOLED display. And this is a full HD plus display with a resolution of 2400 by 1080 pixels. Now, this is a true 10-bit panel and the colors are vibrant, punchy with perfect deep blacks. You can spot the 16 megapixel punch hole selfie camera right in the center. It comes with 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate with 240 hertz touch sampling. Trust me, it's buttery smooth, especially when you're scrolling on a website or your favorite social media apps. As mentioned earlier, it's adaptive refresh rate, so it'll adjust between 30, 60, 90 and 120 hertz depending on the content you're consuming. This also helps save battery life. Here we are streaming a 4K HDR video from YouTube and it's playing perfectly at full 4K without any lag or drop frames. We get Widevine L1 certification, so it streams content from OTT apps like Netflix, Prime Videos at full resolution. The phone also supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. You can spot the logo on some of the supported content on Netflix. It's an amazing experience. The brightness is very impressive and the colors are tuned perfectly. Taking it to the next level are the dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, which makes it even more immersive. Trust me, it's like a mini theater in your palm. Glad to see that the headphone jack is still included, something we don't see very often. Now you can connect your wired headphones and enjoy lossless audio. By the way, this phone also comes with an IR blaster, which is such an underrated piece of hardware. I use the Mi Remote app to control the AC all the time. It's so handy. Now since we're talking about software, it's running Android 12 with MIUI 14 experience. So it's a good thing that we get the latest MIUI version, but Android 13 along with that would have just been great. However, POCO has confirmed two OS updates and three years of security updates. So I'd say that's quite good. Overall, the OS is very well optimized, cleaner than its earlier versions for sure, but still infested with bloatware apps as usual. I think I'm going to stop saying it because everyone is doing it. Clean OS chahiye to probably Pixel is your only bet. Of course, here too, you can delete the apps that you don't need. So I won't crib too much. Coming to the hardware, well they have the tried and tested 6 nanometer Snapdragon 778G. Yes, it supports 5G and I don't think the number of bands matter anymore, but I can tell you, it will support all 5G service providers in India. We too got a solid 5G connection using our Geo SIM. Coming to the performance, well it's rock solid and consistent. Opening closing apps, multitasking all worked like a charm. In all these days, I didn't experience any lag or app crashes. 
The unit we have came with 8 GB LPDDR4X RAM and you can further extend it by 5 GB from the RAM extension settings which gives you a total of 13 GB. Now this really helps to keep most of your recently used apps still in memory. We also ran benchmarks starting with Antutu and we got 5,17,000 which is really impressive. Storage is UFS 2.2 and we tested that too and we got 1,027 MB read and 903 MB write. We briefly played Call of Duty and it was an excellent gaming experience for a mid-range phone. Snappy, responsive and very smooth. Slight heating of the phone was experienced after playing continuously for 30 minutes but still not to the extent of getting uncomfortable. Remember, it's not a gaming centric phone but still the gaming performance won't let you down. Coming to the battery, so we get a 5000 mAh battery that would easily last me a day to even a day and a half with medium use. 67 watt charger is included in the box which would charge the phone from 0 to 100 in less than 1 hour which is pretty good. Coming to the camera, well here are some 108 megapixel shots taken from the rear camera. One word for day shots, perfect, excellent color reproduction with really good dynamic range. The clarity of the 108 megapixel true images are very impressive. Here are some more images. Skies don't get blown up and have very good detail. Here is a portrait capture. Again, does a good job in edge detection and the images look really very pleasing. Here are some 8 megapixel ultra wide shots. Good colors, crisp with pretty good dynamic range as well. On the whole, they capture good detail. Here are some 2 megapixel macro shots. Now, as long as you don't zoom in further, it's decent. You can actually get really close shots. Here are some 16 megapixel selfies. The images do overexpose in direct sunlight. Dynamic range isn't the best. However, the clarity is still very good. Portrait images too, though good edge detection, are extremely flat and again overexposed. Rear camera can record 4K videos at 30 FPS. Here's a handheld video clear with minimal shake. Front camera can record full HD. This too feels overexposed. The front camera is best used indoors. Alright, final thoughts. So the Poco X5 Pro ticks all the boxes that you look for in a smartphone if your budget is between 20 or 25,000. Impressive performance, super built and design, 120Hz AMOLED display, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, dual stereo speakers, HDR10 support, 108 megapixel main camera, 67 watt fast charging and I think that's an excellent package to get. Really, can't think of anything to complain. The 6GB RAM, 128GB storage variant is priced at 22,999 while the 8GB RAM, 256GB storage variant is priced at 24,999. There's also a 2000 card offer which is something worth checking out. I'll share the links and all the discount details below in the description. If you'd like to buy one, you should definitely check it out. So I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.